invoke the Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. Let's talk about this for a little bit uh, with Walt Pavlo, founder of 500 Pearl Street, and we'll get some comments from Bob Grady in just a second. Uh, Walt, thanks for joining us. Uh, do you think he'll plead the Fifth here is my first, my first question. Well, I think there's a lot of people that want to hear something from John Corzine, but I don't think it's going to be today. I mean, I think the chances of him saying anything today are pretty remote. And the re primary reason that I say that is that, you know, here's a guy that, you know, as the crisis was breaking, the bankruptcy and whatnot, that, you know, he left the building. And he pretty much hasn't been seen, you know, since. And this is a guy, as you know, Brian, who, who loves the camera. He's been on CNBC before, and, and uh, you know, he's on various talk shows. And, you know, this guy likes to have his voice out there. And uh, CNBC's even run something recently as to, uh, to, to their uh, uh, viewers out there, where is John Corzine? We got a lot of amusing answers. Yeah, listen, just real quick before I get to, to Bob Grady, if he pleads the fifth, does that mean, because a lot of people are going to assume that maybe criminal proceedings are coming down the pipeline, is that a fair jump in logic if he does plead the fifth? Well, I think if you look at, uh, there's, uh, there's, a, there's a precedent to this. If you look at what happened in Enron, Jeff Skilling um, did testify when he was called before the House prior to any of the, the, the criminal indictments. Um, Ken Lay did not. He, or, you know, he didn't testify. He took the fifth. Um, in both in you know, those cases, both of them were found guilty. So, you know, which one wins? I, I don't know which strategy wins. I don't know. Ne neither one of them has proved to be very effective. And I think a lot of people already presume that he's guilty. Um, talking is probably not going to help his case very much. You know, Bob, of course, you have ties to Governor Christie, sure. New Jersey, and he uh, obviously followed uh, Governor Corzine. And, and listen, there's, there's been no charges, and we have a situation where we don't know the story. But um, what do you think we'll, we'll see today? Well, two things. One, there have been a couple stories in the paper in the last week that have been maybe a little troubling or at least concentrate the, the sort of focus on uh, former Governor Corzine. One, that he kind of overruled many of his directors who were warning about the undue risk he was taking with his large European sovereign bet. Second, he overruled his own chief risk officer who was raising the same warning flag. Right. Nothing illegal about doing that, overruling your directors or convincing them to go your way, but it kind of uh, you know, focuses the attention on uh, on his appetite for risk. Obviously, those of us who've been involved in New Jersey, you know, felt you know <laughs> he probably uh, took undue risks with the state of New talk? Jersey in terms of. But yeah. here's the sixty-four thousand dollar question that hasn't been answered. So I don't know if we'll take the fifth or not. But yeah. the sixty-four thousand question to me, having been in the investment business for twenty years, is what happened to the money? To this six hundred million or yeah. one billion or one point two billion of customer accounts. We still don't know the answer. Where are the customer accounts segregated? Aggregated, which is the ironclad rule of any investment right. organization. You cannot use them to cover your in-house trades. We'll see if they do it, and obviously that'll be the the, the, the line of questioning. And uh, you know, so we'll see. We'll see I, if we I, learn I, that today, uh, Ross. Over to you. Yeah. Well, on that on that particular point, um, you know, you've been speaking to people that have had money with the firm. Where, where are they with being able to get access to it? The cash that was with the company. Great. I, I've talked to some uh, uh, one particular investor out in California, and he's not been able to get his his money. He's not a commodities trader. He used it as a regular brokerage account, had over a million dollars in it, and he still doesn't have his money to this day. And you know that was his primary source. Well, it was his, it was his funds. It, he's a he's a, a uh, you know an investor, and he doesn't have access to money, and he's angry. You know, he started his own website, MoneyWood.com trying to get people to come in there and say, hey, what do I do? How do I get some action? You know, he calls me or he'll write me and say, you know, I want to answer to, you know, the questions uh, uh, of, of, you know, where the money is. Why wasn't it segregated? You're know, getting back to the other, you know, the, the other point is that there is no good answer here. <laughs> There's, he's not going to be able to give a good answer. And the people who really need the answer aren't the congressmen. It's the people. Yeah. You know, why is my money right. tied up? And, and they're, they're very angry. Walt, thanks for getting up early uh, with us. And, of course, a beautiful picture of the, the bridge in Boston behind you. Walt Pavlo, founder of 500 Pearl Street. And, of course, we appreciate the insight from Bob Grady, who is with us the rest of the hour. Coming up on Worldwide Exchange, as investors await any word from the EU summit over the next two days, we'll take a look at how they can hedge the market.